This is Maya. She's about to go on trial for a crime we know she hasn't committed. If we don't do anything about it, she's going to prison on a charge of murder. After a few hours of crime scene investigation and talking to witnesses, we will not only prove without a doubt that Maya could not have possibly committed the crime, we'll also find out who the actual perpetrator was. They'll confess, and all charges against Maya will be dropped. It's a pretty standard formula for any detective game, but this isn't quite what I'd call a standard detective game. You're not playing as a detective, you're playing as Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. That comes with an entirely new set of complications, because her trial? It's starting right now! In Ace Attorney, your responsibilities go beyond just capturing a criminal the police fail to. You've also got to defend your innocent client in a court of law against the faulty conclusions of the police and witnesses, while you have incomplete information. Evidence is everything in these courts. You have to use evidence to prove that there was no conceivable way for your client to have committed the crime, and you have to prove the killer's identity with evidence, of course. Because if you don't point to someone for the police to imprison, your client is going to get a guilty verdict. The main series of games has you go up against prosecutors that have never been defeated in their careers. Some of them use underhanded or outright illegal tactics in an attempt to win. It's effectively a guilty until proven innocent system in this game. So how exactly are you supposed to win? Well, you, the player, have to present evidence to the court to turn the trial in a different direction. Like all games, Ace Attorney is interactive, but not in the way that you might expect from a game like this. You're probably thinking of choices that can affect an outcome. Things like, this character will remember that, or you ranked up your relationship with this character. Ace Attorney doesn't do that. This series makes no attempt to hide its linearity. There's only one correct path to go down, and nothing but joke answers and penalties if you try to stray from that. Though I've gotta say, some of those joke answers are pretty good. <laughs> if that's the case, couldn't you get a similar experience from, say, watching the anime? Well, no. And also, don't. It's not very good. In more traditional storytelling mediums, your books, plays, movies, the characters will do what they do whether or not you want them to. He's going off into the woods alone, he's gonna disobey orders and get himself killed, she's gonna fall in love with someone she just met. It's pretty easy for the viewer to distance themselves from what's happening in the fictional universe. The line isn't so clear in games. You are the one that has to make the call to cast suspicion on an innocent woman to force a further investigation. I mean, it's either that or having your client go to jail forever for murdering someone. Even if you know the game will only let you progress in the correct paths and will force you down them, as long as you're presented with a choice, you're going to weigh the options. You're no longer thinking about your character, you're thinking as him. The gameplay in the trial sections that make up over half this game's total runtime is pretty simple. You question witnesses until you find a part of their testimony that's contradicted by evidence, and present it. Just expose their lies and we can move on from there. After 20 hours of game, it just becomes standard fear. Nothing to think twice about. But getting the players to that point is an achievement in itself. This is a series of games with their foundations in the premise that the witness is always unreliable. That's nowhere close to how most people would default to thinking if you put them in a courtroom. You're spending the entire game in opposition of what we call law enforcement officials. But it's what you've got to do to make any sort of progress in these games. Once a player is at that point, it's not so hard to inch them a bit further into understanding the broader social commentary these game cases are built around. I'll be speaking in extremely broad terms to avoid spoilers here, but the series explores things like... What can happen if the guilty walk free? Obstruction of justice. The unpredictable swings of public the opinion. Differences between ladders the and difficulties in combating the organized manipulation crime. of human. How to ask to steal samurai for an the autograph. The privilege afforded to people as a result. The of use of status. illegal and fabricated evidence. How to keep a teenage girl with you at all times without. Laws seeing effects on international relations. And what happens when people are let down by the legal system? The games even have a stance on police violence. When the game tells you that the police have concluded a blind boy shot and killed his bodyguard with a gun that probably would have dislocated his shoulder during a show he was performing in, yes that is really dumb, but that's part of the point the game is making. A legal system that has drifted so far from normal sensibilities is in dire need of an overhaul. Anyways, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow. These games sound like massive downers. Why the hell would I want to play something like that? And yeah, there are a lot of games that really effectively make points about the world that just aren't fun to play because that's all they're about. After a long day of work, no one's gonna come home and say to themselves, Yeah, I want to play a game where I process paperwork and starve my family. That sounds like a great way to spend my evening. 
But if you think Ace Attorney falls into that category, that's where you'd be very, very wrong. While yes, the games do deal with some heavy themes, they're used more as a framing device for what people care about most in these games, the murder mysteries and insane characters. Ace Attorney makes no attempt to hide that it's the most over-the-top lawyer power fantasy that humanity will ever know. <laughs> Did I really write that sentence? Anyways, when you do something right in the court, the games really sell it. Just look at this. Believe it or not, the game will make you care about the seemingly generic top hat guys. Almost every character in these games has an over-the-top personality, and it's really entertaining to watch them wreak havoc on the courtroom. Especially in the later games where you have multiple witnesses on the stand at once. Just look at some of these sprite sheets. These games have samurai, magicians, a cowboy, a cow... boy... And they've even got Sherlock Holmes. These characters are a big part of what keeps me playing Ace Attorney. Let's take the setup for one of the cases as an example. A spiritual heirloom has been stolen from a museum. The great thief, Mass de Mass, sent his calling card beforehand, and it seems like he was the one who stole it. But who could this thief be? Could it be the filthy rich unemployed thrill seeker with a shopping addiction? Could it be the self-proclaimed ace detective that claims to be the archenemy of the Mass de Mask? Could it be the mysterious director in charge of the museum exhibit the heirloom was stolen from? Maybe it's the CEO of the security company. Or could it be the guy that just turned himself in wearing the full costume that knows way too much information that hasn't been released to the public? And of course, he's the guy you're tasked with defending. Let's be honest, which group of characters do you have more of an instant attachment to? This assortment of intentionally generic character models that have to deliver hours of emotional dialogue for you to fully understand what kinds of characters they are, at least when you're not just looking at them and going, what is wrong with your face? Or these guys, whose entire games take up less file size than a single one of those character models. Who's picking up the cards this magician is throwing out? How many pairs of glasses does this woman just have in her pocket to replace the ones she breaks? Why is everyone just fine taking 20 lashes during a trial? These are questions you don't have to ask, because they're not trying to be real. As a result, they can create characters that have emotions just jumping out at you when you see them. It becomes a lot easier to find some character element that really resonates with you from a cast of characters this varied. With some time, you'll start caring about the vast majority of these characters. And when the game's judicial system decides to rear its ugly head on them, you'll be upset too. These games present a worldview, and in 20 hour increments, they train their players to adopt it and later challenge it. Once they leave the bubbles of these 20 hour games, they might bring with them some opinions they didn't have before, ready to be drawn out when the time is right. The series directors, Shu Takumi and Takeshi Yamazaki, are proud to make games that their mothers can enjoy. They're trying to tell their stories to as many people as possible. Even if you didn't really notice a lot of the subtext while playing these games, and the words of a man much wiser than me, but your brain did. So yeah, I'd say it does a pretty good job of being political satire on the Japanese legal system with ludicrously high conviction rates. Oh yeah, did I not mention that earlier? There isn't really much of that scalding commentary anymore, but that's where the series started. These games that people like me fanboy over initially started as political speech relating to a country that we have no real world connections to. This is what makes the Ace Attorney game such an interesting case to examine when thinking about how the games industry can move forward. Games are being used as a tool to train and reinforce the behavior of people from McDonald's to the US military. When you're potentially spending hundreds of hours performing repetitive tasks and looking at the same assets, it's undeniable that games can leave a lasting effect on how you look at the world. Just as there are professional grade flight sims, there are military simulations designed to train the behavior of soldiers. 
Uh, this was for the New Zealand Defense Force. So again, they wouldn't upgrade from BBS-1 to BBS-2 because they were doing uh, training for peacekeeping operations in East Timor at the time. And so of course, the most important feature was the ability to put a weapon on your back. If there was a guerrilla fighter and he had a weapon on his back, you kind of leave him alone. If he had a weapon in his hand, he could be shot. He might be threatening you. When I was in, in Afghanistan, I was deployed to Sangin District. And we'd basically be walking around talking to farmers about their donkey or about their house that was destroyed um, in a low density minefield, but just walking around talking. And in the middle of this deployment, there was a young Marine. I remember very clearly he had this quote. Uh, he said, this isn't what I expected. I thought I'd be doing heroes like in Call of Duty. So what you might not realize is that your work as writers and as game developers really matters. It really helps set the expectation that society has of what war is and what the military is. And the reason for this is because as people we're designed to learn through stories and through play and through emotions. We don't learn from you know, history or long form journalism, unfortunately. Um, so really you are society's teachers in a way. So my question is what lessons are we teaching? So what would happen if a group were to come in and with a bag of money, change the economic system a game company is trying to optimize? There wouldn't have to be many strings attached. Just follow some guidelines on how certain topics are portrayed in game. Let's be honest, in the current state of global finance with the existence of shell companies and international tax havens that don't care about the dealings being done, if this is already happening, we wouldn't be able to find out unless the companies involved wanted us to know about it. Let me just remind you that Activision Blizzard's Call of Duty, one of the best selling video game franchises of all time, has a story campaign. A story campaign that in 2019 tried to rewrite history and cast Russia as the evil perpetrators behind alleged war crimes committed by Americans. Call of Duty is transparently used as a major recruiting tool by the US military. The army even has an esports team. Activision Blizzard has also been working to grow in the Chinese market for over a decade. They've partnered with Tencent Holdings to publish Call of Duty online in China. They've shown that they aren't above banning top players and commentators for political speech criticizing the Chinese government. And I'm definitely not the first to notice this, but being able to create one game instead of two to sell to both the Chinese and global markets would be in Activision Blizzard's financial interests. You know, up there with the creative accounting the United States allows them to do to effectively pay a tax rate of negative 54.4% in 2018. You heard that right. American taxpayers gave Activision Blizzard over $200 million in 2018. Some game companies have shown us time and time again that they will take every opportunity they have to increase their profits and please shareholders. So is the next proxy war going to be between countries trying to turn video games into propaganda? I've got no idea, but what I can say for sure is that we're now well past the era where one man can get his vision published by a major video game developer. This was made very clear when the Ace Attorney team was given an order from above that dictated the major theme of at least one of their games. At this point, I hope you can understand why it can be so lucrative to use games as a way of advertising or spreading a system of beliefs. So what will games look like when they sell out to our corporate overlords? I've got a guess about how things could go, but this video is getting too long. That's gonna have to be a story for another time. Based on the way they've treated the series, I think we can say at least Capcom probably hasn't sold out and let their Ace Attorney game stories become dictated by outside influences. I mean, they just won't stop trying to sell us the first games that started out with Capcom letting a team of 7 people make whatever they want, so yeah. I do recommend that you go buy the games and play them in this order, if for no other reason than to show them that the series is worth continuing, but there's one game I want to recommend more. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. It's another murder mystery game by the creator of Ace Attorney, Shu Takumi, but it is way better than any Ace Attorney game. The entire game revolves around solving the mysteries around the death of a single man. Yourself. That's right, you're dead for the entire game, but in return, you get to use the powers of the dead. Go check it out. <laughs>